Apple's latest Mac chips have shaken up the personal computer industry, driving sales of Apple's MacBooks and iMacs and pushing rivals to search for new solutions. In just the last year and a half, Apple has output the M1 to the M1 Ultra to the M2, and over the next year, I expect new M2 Pro and Max chips, as well as the first M3 chips. But all of this has taken a toll on Apple's chip efforts for its other products. Case in point, two of Apple's most popular devices, the iPhone and the Apple Watch, will not be getting their typical big chip upgrades this year. For the first time since Apple began designing its own iPhone processors, the base iPhone 14 models won't be getting an all-new chip. Those phones will stick to the A15 from the iPhone 13. Instead, only the more expensive iPhone 14 Pro line will get a faster A16 processor. Similarly, for the first time in its own history, the Apple Watch will be sticking to the same processor technology for the third year in a row. While the Series 8 will get an S8 chip, the processor will be on par with the S6 chip from the Series 6 in 2020. Apple has also been facing hurdles with the development of its first cellular modem, with test versions of the component facing overheating issues. I don't expect an Apple modem to arrive until 2024 at the earliest. I believe all of these issues are in part the result of Apple's chip department being spread too thin, as well as a new focus on the Mac. It's also, of course, due to industry-wide bottlenecks like the chip shortage, which is leading to higher prices as well as rising shipment costs. And TSMC, Apple's manufacturing partner, is also not without blame due to its somewhat rocky transition to new 3 nanometer processor technology. I'm Mark Gurman. This is Power On.